So welcome to the Sitch then, and this is another one of the RH Fisheries Waters and it's another spectacular venue. Totally enclosed in trees, loads of massive fish, no reception on your phone, and just the perfect place to come down to for a 48 hour session. And it's early March now, conditions look good, there's fish coming out, so it's now just a case of trying to find a swim and see if we can catch a few fish. Check out that scenery. This place is absolutely stunning. It's roughly 26 acres and out there is about 130 pound carp. The biggest of which goes to 50 pounds eight ounces, I think. It was 50 a few weeks ago. But regardless of what the stocks are like, that is just a beautiful place to be. And it's no wonder that tickets to fish here are really sought after. So this is the swim I've decided to go in. This is uh, peg 12, and I've decided to put the, the bivy right up here in the forest, which is well away from where you're actually putting your rods, because there's a board down there where you've got your, your rods on the end. Now, I could, could fit a bivy on the end of that if I wanted to, but if I'm honest, I don't like doing that, because um, when you're on a board, you've only got to sort of move or make any sort of sound, and it just transfers straight into the lake, and to me you're better off back here you know it's not too far to get to me rods if they go but I've also got all this lovely forest behind me which is just gorgeous but um, yeah the reason I've gone in here is because I've seen some fish just out in front I just spent about half an hour or so watching and you know it's early March now and it's getting warm there's fish getting caught I know there's a few fish getting caught from out in the middle and I only sort of spent half an hour or so just gazing out there and I started seeing just fish below the surface, there's one there, just see it right in the swim. You know, there's definitely carp around here. Now you do tend to get a lot of fish caught from right in that middle area. I know that's where the big one was caught a few weeks back. I know it's also where a lad has just caught um, one of the 40 pound commons from out in the middle as well. So. That seems to be the best area because it does get, get some pressure on this water. You see a lot of anglers on here, and because it's quite shallow, they tend to congregate right out in the middle. So that's what I'm going to do get a couple of rods set up and get them whacked out to the middle. This is the time of the year when you can't beat a wafter, so I've been down at the DNA factory and picked up some SLK wafters, some Secret 7. Some of the new crayfish ones, some nutter s, and I've got loads of glugs as well. But the one that we're going to go for today, the ever reliable SLK. It's early March, so the fish are just waking up, and there's no need to put loads of bait out, so it's just going to be single hook bait fishing. So I'm going to get one of these, which is glugging in some food dip. They've been in there for a few weeks now. They don't smell lovely, but hopefully they will do to the carp, and then whack it out to the middle of the lake. This is where it all starts because uh, I've had a really busy weekend and I've been dashing around all day today, driving to the lake, roads are really busy and lake's been quite busy as well by the looks of it and um, just managed to get the rods out, I found some fish so I'm happy with those, I've got the bivy up, I've got the chair in place, this is where it all starts, you can start to relax because um, I've got 48 hours ahead of me now and feeling really confident because there's been a few fish out and there's definitely a few of them in front of me. Conditions look good as well and it's nice to be sat down because I've uh, had a real busy weekend. I entered my first ever 10k race this weekend. Um, do quite a lot of running. You've probably seen that on one or two of my blogs but um, I actually do quite a lot of marathon running and half marathons and don't really do any sh shorter distances. So I've been training for Paris Marathon for the last 12 weeks and hoping to break that three hour barrier. 
so I've put a lot of effort into that but uh, that got pulled a few days ago when um, this virus started um, causing a bit of havoc around the world so unfortunately that got binned but my missus saw that there was a, a 10k race in Pontefract this weekend over in um, in West Yorkshire so she said you fancy entering it so I thought yeah what the heck I've trained quite a lot and ended up coming 28th out of 1300 runners which was really good pretty really happy with that it's not bad for an old bloke because I'm 50 years old now and managed to finish in 39.15 which is what I was uh, hoping for just to get under the, the sub 40s you know I'm still pretty competitive when it comes to sport which might surprise a few of you because um, I'm not competitive at all when it comes to fishing you know the thing is with fishing I've been been around so long now in this game and I know that you know you get your day it might not be today when I catch a few it might be the next day it might be the time after that everybody gets their go you know that's what fishing does it's um, it's something that we can all be successful at once you've cracked out to do it um, you know if I stuck my nan who knows nothing about fishing on Euro Aqua and gave my rods and she cast out the chances are she could get a world record carp on the end and next minute she could be world record holder you know that's what happens in fishing but when it comes to sport you can't be like that you know there's no there's no look that's going to get you to be the world record holder you've got to put the training in you've got to put the hours in and you've got to have a little bit of talent so when it does come to sport I get a little bit more competitive so um, you know, I always set myself little goals and milestones. And when I got on that start line, I thought, yeah, let's try and get a sub 40 today. So to get a 39.15, proper happy with it. But um, yeah, legs are aching now. So it's good to be sat down and it's good to have fish in front of me. So 48 hours in front of me. Let's hope we can catch one or two of them. I'll put first light for a bit of fish spotting. But that is not a good sign. A frozen land in it. Freezing cold night, but the weather is due to change today. There's going to be a bit of wind coming and apparently a bit of rain. So, unless I catch anything in the next three or four hours, because they're completely motionless, then I think I'm going to have a move to the far side because in the week there was a lad who fished in Peg 4. We had a 41 common and a couple of 30 pounders as well, so I know they're definitely getting caught from over there, even though I was seeing them over here yesterday when I was setting up, so see how it goes. We're only here for 48 hours, so with almost 24 in the bag and no fish, you need to do something. So I'm always prepared for a move, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just looking at myself in that camera screen and it looks cold and that's because it is cold. My feet are like ice blocks at the minute but um, at this time of the year especially because they haven't fully woken up yet they can be very very particular about where they pick baits up from so if you find an area on the lake where they're getting caught from the chances are unless they move out of that swim then once you get in there with a different bait or whatever you're using that even if it's different to the other guy the chances are you're still going to catch them so that's what I've done and I hope it pays off can't say it's going to it hasn't done yet I've just got the rods out but if I catch something out of here then I think I've um, proved a point that it is a case of 
getting in the spot where they're picking bait up from. But you know, I've got 24 hours left now in this room. It's still raining, it's still pretty miserable. This time of the day, which is, um, let me just have a look, I think it's about half four. I've been told there's a chance of a bite around about now, but first thing in the morning is the best time, sort of up until about 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's when I'll probably be giving it to, and then um, I'll see see what I'm going to do. I'm, um, it's in that, that period at the moment when the old coronavirus is, uh, has been striking, so I don't need to do too much running at the moment. I haven't got a marathon now until October, November time, so I haven't really got to do any sort of serious running, which, if I'm honest, as much as I love me running, uh, in these conditions I'm not really going to miss it because it's, it's wet and damp and, and miserable, and I'd rather sit on the rods because by the time on this venue, definitely from speaking to some of the locals down here, it seems to be a lot better during the day, so yeah sit on the rods see what happens so i've got 24 hours ahead of me now and if it doesn't pay off in this swim then i probably should have stuck in the other one but that's carp fishing in it you gotta gotta be in it to win it so uh, we'll see how we go It's a big old round one this one, big old fat lump and uh, if I'm honest when it first popped up in front of the net I saw the shoulders on it, I thought yeah that'll do, but it's not got quite the length of a really big fish but either way that is a brilliant start. This month's product plug is the Safeguard Landing Net from Avid. Now, I've been using this net for almost 10 months and it's a lovely bit of kit. Very lightweight, which slides through the water beautifully with netting fish. There are a couple of options available, either with a one or a two piece handle, both featuring Japanese shrink wrap and both of which have a standard 42 inch net. Now, it's very easy to assemble and has a durable slimline CNC spreader block which is built into the handle. I've had loads of fish in this net and not only does it do the job, it looks the part. Everyone loves a bit of camo and that mess just looks the absolute nuts. If you shop around on the net, you'll pick one up for as little as 90 quid. So for more information, check it out at avidcarp.com. Just listen to that. If you're wondering what I'm on about, it's nothing, it's silent. This really is a lovely place to be. It's so far away from roads and everything else that's going on in the normal world. It's uh, a beautiful place. I can hardly hear anything. I could just hear the other anglers on the other bank, but um, it really does um, smell as well really nice. It's that time of the year when things are starting to come to life. It's a great time of the year to be on the bank. and. Um, if I'm honest, last year I had a couple of goes on here and I didn't really like it and it wasn't because of the venue, it was mostly because when I came down here it was really busy, you know, there's, there's so many nice fish in here now and they're all growing really well. It became a real busy ticket, it's really sought after, but this year Rob and Ed Matthews who runs the place have decided to up the ticket price and reduce the number of anglers down here. There was a time last year when I came on here when nearly every swim was taken and if I'm honest, a couple of times 
because I'm getting older nowadays. I'm not that old. I know I'm not that old. And I don't want to sound like a, an old grumpy man, but as you as you get older, you tend to try and seek different things from your fishing. And you know, I've got the snow carp in the album. I've got all the doubles, fished all the rivers, canals, fished for big fish, caught a few, blah blah blah. And the one important thing now in my fishing is that I like to fish venues that are just nice to be at. You know, I did a blog last year on Acton Bunnell, who you might have seen it, and it's on the on the YouTube channel and that place is so much special it really is it's so remote and so beautiful to just be there and um, although this place is stunning it was a little bit too busy for me but you know and, and as you get older you sort of you you want something different you know I'm, I'm i'm getting to that stage now where i like to have a little bit of solitude and like to have a, a swim between me and another angler and um a couple of times I ended up getting woken up early in the morning on air and, and lasting at night and I think as you get older you, you, you have a little bit more respect for other people because I won't nowadays go and fish right next to somebody, I'll look for a, a spot that's well away from them and I'll also know when not, not to go round into somebody's swim, you know, I certainly won't wake them up at six o'clock in the morning and I won't be knocking on the bivvy door at half past ten at night, you know, people work different shift hours to a lot of people and you know we all work different shift hours I should say and everybody goes to sleep at different times so you know there's a little bit of etiquette in carp fishing that I won't say it's disappeared but certainly as you get older you expect it a little bit more when you're on the bank because I come from a generation where the, the, there's the world's carp fishing etiquette in, in, in the early days that I started carping and I'm not saying I complied with it because when I was younger I was a lot of different angler to what I'm like now didn't sort of notice it until you get a little bit older and um, you know nowadays if somebody's setting up in a swim I won't go around and talk to them and if they're packing down I won't go around and talk to them and I certainly won't go around when they're eating their dinner um, and I won't sort of cast out unless I've gone and had a word with whoever's next door to me either side and found out where the left hand rod is or the right hand rod and I'll give them space you know that's how I am and um, you know it's an important part of carp fishing I think and it's something that's uh, I wouldn't say it's a dying breed because there's plenty of guys around who, who are my age and grumpy old men like me but um, certainly as carp fishing's become a bit more mainstream it's on telly and that there's a lot of people who are coming into it straight from, from TV and that and it does make it a little bit difficult for people like me to fit in on certain lakes certainly the lakes that are very busy but you know there are places thanks to Rob Ailes and fisheries like that, that uh, you can escape it and hopefully this year on here, now it's been reduced in numbers, it's going to be just like Acton is, which is just a mega place to be. Well, just uh, redone the rods after a quiet night and uh, just landed that lump, which definitely looks like it's another decent kipper. So let's get it weighed in. Another mega fish. And this one looks absolutely gorgeous. The colours on it are fantastic. It's got a really weird trait, which I'll show you in a minute, that its uh, left hand eye is almost like, like Popeye. But that is a chunk. And it's a very typical RH Fisheries carp, this one, because it's very broad across the shoulders and quite short, really, in length. If you saw the shoulders when it came up in front of the net, it did look a lot bigger than what it's actually weighed. It's weighed in at 28 pounds, but mega. Lovely start to the morning. And this is his, uh, his Popeye side. 
his eyes really bulging out. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, perfectly healthy, lovely carp, and a great way to start the day. Tell you what, it's proper cold here at the minute. It's not that cold temperature wise, it's probably about 14 degrees, but there's a really biting cold northerly wind and it's blowing straight down the lake into my bivvy. So I'm just stood to the side of it, but um, yeah, I've got about four different layers of clothing on at the moment, so I'll probably look about 20 stone, but uh, it's definitely worth being out here because the fish are feeding. They're still in those little, little pockets that you tend to see because I've had nothing on my right hand rod and I've actually just reeled it in a few moments ago and put it quite close to where my left hand rod is because I know the guy who was in this swim before me, he was catching his fish from pretty much the same area where I've had those two from. So, you know, it's definitely worth trying to find where those pockets of fish are in, in front of you, you know, casting around and giving it half an hour or so in, in different spots to try and find where they are because they've not fully woken up yet. Um, it is only, what is it today, I think it's about the 12th of March, so it's not not too late, it's only just been a two or three days of decent warm weather, so um, although the fish are, are getting caught, they're not really out of that winter, winter sort of mode just yet, but um, yeah, it's cold being here, but I'm happy being here, so uh, let's hope we get a few more fish before I leave. Well, it's finally stopped raining, and although the wind's still blowing, it's uh, thankfully drying the gear out. The bivvy behind me is uh, almost dry, but it's been a good session. I've been down here for just short of 48 hours, so, you know, for my first trip of the year this year to this venue, and not really knowing a great deal about it, and I certainly am no regular on here, to come down for a one-off trip for 48 hours and manage to get myself a couple of nice fish, I'm really happy with it. But you know, it's been uncomfortable, it always is at this time of the year. The weather conditions are always a bit up and down. One minute it's warm, next minute it's cold. And it does send the fish all over the place as well. You know, they've been active, but they've been hard to tempt. You know, I had a lot of fish in front of me in the, the first swim that I started in, but um, in this swim that I'm in now, um, if I'm honest, I've not, I've not seen anything in front of me, but I've managed to catch a couple. So thanks to Ed for giving me the information that uh, the fish have been coming from over this side of the lake. So. Um, all in, it's been a good trip, and now all I've got to do is, is get packed away, get myself off home, and thank you all once again for, for watching me blog, and I hope to see you again in a few weeks' time for my next one.